So good to be with you again, and uh, I, I want to take a moment. We're going to have communion in just a few minutes, so uh, you run, grab you some juice and a cracker or a piece of bread, and we'll have communion together uh, in just a few minutes. And uh, I, hope you're, I hope you're having a good week, a great week. You know, uh, I got to confess to you, I mean, you guys know me, um, You've been around here for for a while. You know that I struggle with anxiety, and this morning, that's what I'm talking about is anxiety. We've been talking about emotions. Last week, we began the series on emotions, and and this week, we're looking at anxiety, and then next week, we'll look at anger, and we'll follow it up with sadness and, and how to experience joy even when we're uh, sad. So uh, this week we're looking at anxiety, and uh, for so many years anxiety has been so close to me. And 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 usually when I speak on something, I usually struggle with it. And I don't know why that is, but maybe it's psychosomatic because I'm a little bit crazy. So maybe that's it. But but uh, this week uh, I was on the way to church to a meeting. Actually, yesterday, and and uh, I had that feeling again. Because a few years back, I, I really struggled with anxiety attacks and panic attacks. And, and on the way to a meeting, um, Myra and I was on the way, and, and all of a sudden, I felt that, that tightness in the chest and that, that racing and, and just that feeling of coming back of anxiety. And we just began to talk and pray, and, and uh, it released, but... Uh, you just got to know. I mean, I don't know about you. Maybe you struggle with anxiety. Maybe, maybe for the first time you need to admit it. Maybe you need to just type it in the chat with us and just say, yeah, me too. Just say me too, you know? And, and it's a way to getting it out. And, and um, you, you know, I want you to know that, that I do know Jesus. I love Jesus. And I've been following Jesus for most of my life. And I'm committed to him. But I still battle with these feelings of anxiety. And it's a struggle. It's, you, you know, the workload, the, the virus, the, everything that compounds us. And, and sometimes it just comes out of nowhere, this feeling of panic. And I know over the years that uh, I've talked with people and people said, well, well, you just need greater faith. You just need to trust God more. And I got to tell you, that's not the case. If you struggle with anxiety, you know that's not the case. It's, it's not about, uh, you know, sometimes you just wake up in the middle of the night. You ever done that? You wake up in the middle of the night and your mind's racing, your heart's racing, and you just can't stop it. You may be a follower of Jesus, and yet you still deal with anxiety. You know, we're in this time that's so different, aren't we? I mean, we're in this time when 2020 is, is actually the longest year in history, right? I mean, it seems like it's been going on forever. I think 2020 is going to take on a whole new meaning for us. It's not only, it's not going to uh, be about seeing clearly, but it's going to be about, man, you don't go 2020 on me, right? Because it's just been such a hard, difficult year. You know, we've had the virus that's been introduced, and, and this it's like a wildfire. It just shut down the whole world. Not just our country, but the whole world. And it's disrupted our routines, and it's created great fear, economic struggles, racial tensions, political tensions. Wherever you turn, you look at the news, and you don't know what to believe. You don't know what you're reading, if it's true, if it's not true. And it just creates, creates this uncertainty, doesn't it? It creates fear in us. It can feel lonely. It feels like we're out of control. And anxiety can just creep in to us. But I, I want to tell you, there's hope. There's hope. You know, according to the National Center for Health, last year, uh, in July of 2019 of last year, it said that 8.2% of adults showed signs of anxiety disorder. 8.2%. Now, you remember that. 
And then this year in 2020, in July of 2020, it said that 36% of adults showed signs of anxiety disorder. Four times as much. And that's just the ones reporting, right? So anxiety has really grown through this time that we've experienced. And anxiety, man, is complicated. It's not just, it's just not compartmentalized in one little area of your life. Anxiety flows through every area of our life. And I know when I was dealing with it that there was so many different aspects of it. There's the, there's the physical component and went to the doctor's. And the doctors helped me. They gave me medication and tried to help me with medication. You know, I was diagnosed with general anxiety uh, disorder, and, and they gave me some medicine for that, and that helped a little bit. And then I went to counseling and, and talked with counselors. The emotional aspect, some of my background was dealt with. Then they're situational, right? When you're, when you're called into uh, the difficulty, maybe it's work, maybe it's school, maybe it's other issues that you've got going on in your life, maybe it's relational issues. And then there's the spiritual component as well that can add and that you've got to work through and deal with because all of our life is not in compartments. It's not like split up in a piece of pie. We're the whole pie, and they all run together. And they all intermix. Sometimes uh, medication, sometimes diet, supplements, counseling, all these work together. But this morning, I want to talk about the spiritual component of it and how we can find strength and help. And we've got to look at Jesus' life to see that, right? So maybe this morning you're a follower of Christ and you're feeling anxious. And maybe you're going, well, maybe this is sin in my life because I'm feeling anxious. Do you ever feel that way? Sometimes you think that, you know, because you're feeling anxious and, and, and maybe panicked. You know, the difference between an anxiety attack and a panic attack is a panic attack. You, you feel like you're going to die. And see, I knew, I knew what was coming because I've also had a heart attack, so I know that feeling, but I also know the anxiety part of it too, that, that the tightness of the chest, you know, and when it started clicking in, it was like, okay, I've got to take some steps here. Got to work through this. You see, see, anxiety is really kind of like anger. You see, they can lead to sin, but they're not sin. Because God even gets angry, right? And I want to show you this, this morning that Jesus dealt with anxiety and how he overcame it and how he got through it. And I want you to see that through Jesus' life. How does Jesus respond to overwhelming anxiety what's so cool about this this series that we're in is that there's nothing no emotion that you can ever go through ever feel that jesus hasn't already been there and already done it and already got through it and can show us how to deal with them and anxiety is one of those and we need to look at his life and see what he did to to overcome the anxiety when anxiety rose up in jesus's life you know what Jesus did? Maybe, 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 I don't know. When you get anxious, what do you do? Do you talk? Do you talk a lot? That's what Jesus did. He talked to it. He talked back to it. And so when we find relief from anxiety, there's three things we need to do. The first is this, is talk with your friends. I want you to see this in Jesus' life. You know, the context here is, is it's the Last Supper, and, and Jesus gets through with the Last Supper. And he's got his life group, right? He's got his disciples with him. And so they go to the Garden of Gethsemane. And they walk to the Garden of Gethsemane there. And, and Judas has already slipped out to go betray Jesus. And Jesus knows that in his mind, that where Judas is going. And he knows it won't be long before the soldiers come. And he takes takes the disciples, they go to the Garden of Gethsemane, and the, he takes his three buddies a little further. 
He took Peter, James, and John. The Bible says this. The Bible says they went to a place called Gethsemane, the garden. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. You guys wait here. I'm going to go a little further and, and, and pray, you know, talking to the disciples. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. Look at that. He was anxious, distressed, and troubled. Think about this. I mean, Jesus knew what was coming. He was fully God, but yet he was fully man too. And that's hard to get our minds around. But Jesus knew what was coming. He knew that Judas was betraying him. And he knew that the soldiers were going to come and arrest him. And when they arrested him, they were going to take him to trials. And then he was going to be beaten. He knew all this was coming. And the Bible says that he was deeply distressed and troubled. Look what the message says. The message translation. The, it's a devotional translation. It says this. He plunged into a sinkhole of dreadful agony. Can you relate to that? Have you ever found yourself in a sinkhole of dreadful agony? I mean, just, he was so, he was so overcome with emotion and anxiety and stress here. You know, the Bible even says that, you know, during all this time that he, he, sweated drops of blood because he was so stressed out so anxious you see he was facing the most painful and humiliating type of death and he knew it was coming they were going to strip him naked they were going to beat him they were going to hang him on a cross and he was going to die there and yet even worse than that, Jesus, who had never sinned, was going to become sin so that you and I could be forgiven. And that weight, the weight of carrying all our sin on him. The murder, the rape, the lust. We can just keep going, right? The lies, the betrayals, turning our back on God, all of those sins, living for ourselves, all the selfishness placed on Jesus, and Jesus begins to bear that weight and, and to sense what's coming. You see, this point here of talking to our friends is so vital for us but we got to be real with it we got to be authentic and i know for guys it's hard for us sometimes to come clean and say man i'm struggling i'm having difficulty here now look what jesus does he goes back to the guys he goes back to his friends and look what he says he says my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death I'm overwhelmed, guys. Do you have a group of friends that you can really open up to, that you can really be honest with, that you can really share your, your difficulty that you're going through? I hope you do. I hope that you're realizing through this pandemic how much we need each other. I mean, we really need each other. The church is so vital to us. Our life groups are so important. And I want to encourage you, if you're not in one, to find one. And we're getting ready to start up again and kick them off again. And we want you to be a part of a life group. We, maybe it'll be virtual, maybe in person with social distancing and masks. But listen, you need to be connected so that you can talk to people, so you can share the burden. You know, it is what I've found, it is so important to share it because your struggle gets half when you share it with someone else. When you keep it silent and secret, it just makes you sicker. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Pray for me. Stay with me, guys. 
He tells them how he's feeling. You know, one of the biggest reasons we feel anxiety right now is because we're lacking that community with each other. The Bible, uh, all the way back in the beginning, right, with Adam and Eve, when God created Adam and he looked at all his creation, he said, everything looks good except you, Adam. He said, there's something missing. He said, it's not good for you to be alone. It's not good for us to live life as lone rangers. God wants us to come together, to be a part of a family, a group, whether they're blood or not. You see, your spiritual family is thicker than blood. And you can share what's going on in your life. It's not good for us to be alone. I can't wait till the day we can really get back and and seeing each other and hugging each other. I miss that. I really miss the hugs, you know? And I'm sure you do. But we've got to be willing to talk to friends. You know, I got to that meeting yesterday, and we were talking about things, and I was able to share my struggle, what's going on in my life. You know, I didn't hold it in. I shared it with my friends, my, my, the staff, and, and you know what? My burden was lifted because I talked with my friends. And you've got to find some folks that you can trust and that you can share with, that you can love on and they can love you. Jesus is saying, so told him, my soul's overwhelmed. I feel like it could kill me, right? I mean, Jesus knew what was coming. And he tells them, pray with me. So he talked to his friends. And then second thing, you know, he talked to his father, right? I mean, we got to go to God with it. You know, how many of you in your car, you got that little light on that says check engine? Any of you got that going on? We got a car and it's, it's, it's on. But, but I've checked it and I know what's wrong with it. It's not just the light. It's not the light that's wrong. That's just a warning of what's wrong with your car. You need to take it somewhere and get it checked especially if the oil light comes on or the, the hot water light comes on. You need to stop, pull over, and find some help before you keep driving it because that's just a warning light. It's telling you that something bad has happened and you need to see someone to get it fixed. You know what anxiety is? Anxiety is that check engine light in our life. Anxiety, when we start to feeling anxiety, it's when we need to go to God and we need to pray to Him. And we need to ask Him for help and strength. Anxiety is that signal that it's time to pray. Paul said, don't be anxious, right? Don't be anxious, but in every situation, what? Pray. Whatever's going on in your life, when you feel that anxiety moving in, take the time to pray. If it's big enough for you to worry about, guess what? It's big enough to pray for. What are you worried about? Are you worried about your marriage? Pray. Are you worried about the election? Pray. Are you worried about the economy or your job? Pray. Are you worried about your relationships? Pray. A decision you've got to make? Pray. Your school? Pray. Your loved ones? Someone sick? Pray. Are you worried about getting the virus? Pray. Or are you worried about having to take the test for the virus where they stick that 10-inch that, that tube down your nose and runs around your brain and comes out your ears you know and you know I, it's no fun you need to pray it's need to pray whatever you're going through if it's on your mind guess what if it's on your mind it's in god's heart and we need to tell him about it we need to ask him to give us the strength to get through it we need to pray Look what the Bible says in Mark 14. It says, going a little further, 
going a little farther, he fell to the ground and he prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. God, if there's any other way, right? God, I don't want to do this. This is overwhelming to me. God, I don't know if I can handle all this. I don't know if I can handle the torture that's coming. I don't, I don't want to be stripped naked before the whole world. God, I don't want to be nailed to the cross. And then he calls him, Daddy, Father, Abba, Father, Daddy, everything's possible with you. Please take this cup from me. In other words, God, if there's any other way, can't you just feel the anxiety that's in Jesus' voice as he's praying this? He was so honest with God. It wasn't some scripted, memorized prayer. I think sometimes we memorize prayers, and that's a detriment to us really coming clean with God. You see, Jesus is screaming from the depth of his soul here. And some of you need to get before God. You need to get in a quiet place and just scream before God what's going on in your life. And let God know. Let it God, you know, God already knows. One of the most cleansing things you can do sometimes is just to let it out before God. Just so freeing. Some of you need to yell at God because you're mad at him and you're angry with him. And let God know. Because he already knows your heart. Get the stress out. Cry from the depth of your soul. God loves you and he's inviting you to cry out to him. That's why God would say this about David. David, you're a man after my own heart. Why? Because David was real with his feelings. You read through the Psalms and you'll see David screaming at God. Where are you, God? Listen to what Jesus says here. What does Jesus say? Jesus says what? God, where are you? God, we've been together since before time. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you turned your back on me, God? Right? You remember that when Jesus is on the cross? Jesus knew that was coming. And he's pouring his heart out to God. God, is there any other way? You know, we just sang the song, Cast Your Cares on him because he cares for you cast your cares what do you care about today what is what are you fretting over what are you worried about today that you need to turn over to god what's on your mind that's on god's heart right so talk to your friends talk to the father and then number three talk to your feelings Anybody ever have, you, you, you guys ever have some crazy feelings? I mean, jacked up kind of out there feelings. You know what I'm saying? You never heard somebody say, follow your feelings? Can I tell you, don't do that? Because sometimes if I would follow my feelings, I'd end up in jail, you know? How about you? Maybe every time we drive 64, right? Don't follow your feelings. Make your feelings follow you. Because you are not your feelings. Your feelings lie to you. Your feelings don't lead you. They don't control you. Don't give in to your feelings. Talk to your feelings. And what do you tell them? Here's what you tell them. You're not the boss of me. You got it? You're not the boss of me. Feelings don't necessarily reflect reality. Man, when you're feeling anxious, man, we, we can make the world so big, can't we? When we're worried, the world looks so big. But when we pray, God makes the problems look smaller because he's able to take care of them. 
Look what Jesus says. Abba, Father, everything's possible with you. Take this cup from me. Yet, yet, here he goes. Here it is right here. Yet not what I will, not what I feeling, not what I feel, God. You see, Jesus didn't feel like being tortured. Jesus didn't feel like having the sin of the world placed on him. Jesus didn't feel like going to the cross for us. And he's saying that. Not what I want, God, but what you want. Not my will, but your will. So we need to speak the truth to our feelings. And we need to align our feelings with our faith. When we feel that God doesn't love us, what do we need to do? We need to tell the truth that God does love us. The Bible says God so loved the world, what? That he sent Jesus, that God demonstrated his love for you and me while we were still enemies, that he sent his son to die on the cross. So when we don't feel loved, we speak the truth. When you feel you're alone, what's the truth there? God promised he would never leave us. He would never forsake us. We've got to speak the truth. You've got to know the truth. When, we're fur, when we feel worried about finances, what do we say? God is able to take care of us. God is, cares for the birds and he's able to care for us. Remember a few weeks ago we talked about that. How God can take care of us and supply all that we need. When we feel like we're a victim, the truth is, no, we're an overcomer. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. So what did Jesus do with his anxiety? He talked to his friends, he talked to his father, and he talked to his feelings. And guess what? It worked. It gave him the strength to get through what he needed to go through. You see, he stumbled into the garden, right? But man, he walked out. He was overwhelmed with soul-crushing anxiety. But when the soldiers came to arrest him, he was able to stand there. And he was able to go through all that he went through because of his love for us. Because he had talked to his friends and his father and his feelings and had moved through the difficulty. And we do too. Deal with our anxiety. We need to do, what, in order to deal with our anxiety, we need to do what Jesus did. It's an ongoing process. You see, I'll probably struggle with anxiety the rest of my life, and I know that. But I've got steps that I can take, and I'm taking those. And I'm watching, my, you know, how busy I get. I take a Sabbath every week where I take a day off and I rest to re- recreate within me because I'm not Superman. You know, Paul writes this in Philippians 4, 6. He says, do not be anxious about anything. Are you listening? Do not be anxious about anything. Can we say the virus? Don't be anxious about the virus. Don't be anxious about the election. Don't be anxious about the future. Don't be anxious about your children. Don't be anxious about your marriage. But in every situation, what's he say? By prayer and petition. What? Talking to the Father. With thanksgiving, present your request to God. With a thankful heart, God. God, I know that you're able to work through this, and I'm giving it to you. God, my fear about this virus, I'm giving it to you. My fear about the future, I'm giving it to you. And look what it says. And the peace of God, which transcends our understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God will guard you. The peace of God, not your peace, not my peace, but God's peace will guard our hearts. The world can't give it to us. 
and the world can't take it away from us. When we come and follow the path that Jesus has given us. You know, there's no storm that God can't bring you through. There's no obstacle God won't help you overcome. There's no enemy that God won't defeat and no heartache God won't heal if you lay it at his feet. Just the mention of Jesus' name can bring peace to our souls. Just a whisper of his name. There is so much power in his name. The power of the resurrection. The Bible says that the power of the resurrection is that same power that we have in our life. When we step across that line of faith and accept Jesus as our forgiver and our leader and we lay our life at his feet and we say, Jesus, I want to follow you with my life. At the mere mention of his name, the enemy has to run. He breaks through our doubting. He breaks through our anxiety and brings us peace. And hope. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let me pray for you. And the struggle with our anxiety. God we come before you now. And in the name of Jesus Father. We thank you that in his name. We have peace. We thank you that in his name. We have forgiveness. We thank you that it is his name. That he gives us hope. And freedom from the pressures and anxiety of this life. And I pray for my friends, God, that they would take these steps. That they would talk to friends, trusted friends. They would talk to you. And they would talk to their feelings. And accept your truth as their truth. And we give you all the glory today, Father, for changing our lives. And giving us the strength to get through the difficulties that we all face. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, I want to take a moment. If, you, if you've got some juice, a piece of bread, we're going to take communion now. And I want to lead us in communion. What, what a great time to take communion as we've just talked about the struggle that Jesus went through. That night that he faced... Before he went to the garden, he already knew what was coming. And he took, he took the bread and he broke the bread, right? He took the bread and he broke the bread and he said, this bread. He says in, in Luke chapter 22, verse 19, he said, he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to them. This is my body given for you. Whenever we take this bread... Do this in remembrance of what Jesus has done for us. The gift of life that he's given us by dying on the cross. Take eat. This is my body, Jesus says. And then in the same way, it says after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. Poured out for our forgiveness. Jesus was willingly sharing, shedding his blood so that we could experience forgiveness and adoption into his family. And when we do this, when we remember this, when we take this cup and drink it, his body and his blood shed for us, given for us, for new life. Thank you, Jesus. For the sacrifice so that we could know you. Take and drink. Shall we pray? Father God, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of life. The hope of a future with you. That no matter what happens in this world, God, we know that you've got us. That we are yours That you've adopted us into your family through the death, burial, and resurrection of your son Jesus. Thank you for his body and blood given for us so that we could experience what real life is all about. 
a relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. In his name, amen. Let's sing together.